What's up, everybody? My name is Alex, and today I want to talk about this guy, or more specifically, this guy, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. Now, I want to make something perfectly clear. This is not going to be your typical review. I'm not going to go over the specs or the build quality or anything like that. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there to do that. Instead, I'm going to focus on this phone from a gamer's and a game developer perspective. I've been a gamer for pretty much my whole life and a game developer for the past 10 years or so. I currently work at Riot Games on Valorant and the recently announced Valorant Mobile. I've been gaming and developing on this phone for the past couple of months now and I feel like I have some interesting insight to share. I'm hoping that this video helps some gamers out there determine whether or not they want to purchase this phone and potentially it helps some developers as well by listing the good and bad things that come with developing for this phone. So let us begin. We'll start by looking at the speakers and their positioning. So I have Command and Conquer Rivals booted up right now. And this is the default orientation that your games are going to boot up in. And if you look at the back of the phone now, uh, the camera bump is at the top and you're holding the phone at the bottom, which is fine. However, the speakers are right here and then down there on the other side of the phone. So when you're holding the phone like this, you're actually pressing up against the speakers, which is not ideal. And I don't know about you guys, but unless I'm playing something like Call of Duty Mobile or maybe PUBG, I don't always use earbuds when I'm playing games. So for something like Command & Conquer Rivals, for instance, I will just use the internal speakers. And I can't really do that with this phone in this orientation. Obviously, you can flip the phone and the application is going to flip around. So you can actually get the speakers to be towards the top uh, of the phone. Which is, which is fine. The problem right now is that the camera bump is actually gonna be at the bottom underneath your hand, so it might get a little bit greasy. So that's kind of a downside to the speaker positioning. Uh, it's not a major problem. I've been playing games like this for a while now without any major issues, but it's worth a mention. Also, even though the battery life on this phone is sufficient and I've been playing games for pretty much the whole day without having to recharge, if you really push it hard, the charging port is up here at the top so if you want to charge the phone while you're playing games, you're kind of facing the same problem because now you have to hold it this way so the charger can plug in and you're not blocking it with your hand. And then again, the speakers at the bottom are going to be underneath your palms. There's no three and a half inch jack on this phone. Uh, so if you want to plug in uh, earbuds directly, you'll have to use a USB-C version, which plugs in over there, or you'll have to use a wireless or Bluetooth uh, earbuds. Next up, let's take a look at the camera notch, or rather the fact that there isn't one. So if you take a look at this Samsung phone, for instance, there's a camera notch right there in the middle of the screen on the left side. And then this iPhone has a notch on the whole left side of the screen. Notches are a real pain for game developers because you have to make sure that the game's UI or the user interface does not go underneath that notch because it's going to be unusable. So what game developers have to do to accommodate is to make sure that on these devices, the UI is pushed towards the right side of the screen so that this area here is clean and there's nothing unusable in your game. Now, on the Fold 3, this is handled by having an underscreen camera. And I don't know if you can clearly see that on camera. It's right there. Maybe you can see it right now. So that's actually the camera that's underneath the screen. But the cool thing is that there are, there's actually pixels on top of it. And the resolution of those pixels is not as big as the resolution of the rest of the screen. So there are larger pixels. So if you really look at it, you can kind of tell the pixels, the pixels are there, but it looks so much better than having a notch or a hole kind of in the screen because you can actually, while you're playing the game and you're focusing on the center of the screen, you can't even tell that there's anything there on the left side under no, normal usage. And I really appreciate that implementation on this phone. Next up, let's talk about the screen because that's the main attraction on this phone. So both the inner screen and the outer screen on this phone, the one over here, are 120 hertz refresh rate, which is great for gaming because it gives you really smooth motion. And also the bezels that you see here are big enough so that you don't get any accidental touches, but then small enough so that they don't look overwhelming and ugly. Uh, I had a few Samsung Galaxy Edge phones in the past where because the bezels were so thin, pretty much non-existent, I would constantly have accidental touches with my palm while I was holding the phone, like over here on the sides. Um, and I appreciate the fact that over here, you can sort of comfortably grab the phone without worrying about accidental touches. 
The larger screen size though means that if you have smaller hands, sometimes you might have trouble reaching across the screen depending on the game that you're playing. If you need to reach, reach over here and touch something on the screen at that location, you might have trouble because it's larger than a normal phone. I have relatively small hands though, and I haven't really noticed a big issue. It's really going to depend on the type of game you might be playing. I also want to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the crease in the middle of the screen. Uh, if you tilt the phone just right, you can kind of sort of see the crease where my thumbs are. I don't know if you can notice that on camera. Uh, obviously the crease is there, but I've seen so many reviews for this phone where the reviewers focus on that crease like it's the end of the world and it's like the worst thing ever. Under normal usage conditions, you will never notice that crease. When you're looking at the phone under a normal angle, it's bright enough so that the crease is invisible. If you run your thumb down the center of the screen, you can feel the crease, but the touch sensitivity works just fine over there as well. So during gaming sessions, I've never noticed that to be a particular issue. So just wanted to let you know, please don't worry about it. It's there. It's a folding phone. You're not going to have a problem with that crease at all while you're playing games. The only potential problem with the screen on this phone is the aspect ratio. And for the most part, that's a problem for game developers, but by extension, it might be a problem for gamers as well, because you might not get high quality games if the developer can't handle that aspect ratio. On this phone with its 7.6 inch screen on the inside, the aspect ratio is 22.5 to 18. That's a really weird square aspect ratio. Generally speaking, the aspect ratio that's mostly kind of prevalent these days is 16 by nine. So if you have assets that is images, there are 16 by nine, a developer can do one of uh, several things. You can stretch the image vertically this way, but then you lose that crispness of the image because it's going to be all stretched out. Or you can potentially zoom in, but then after you zoom in, you're going to crop some of that image on the left and the right side. And potentially those might be important pieces of that image. So that's also not ideal. And then the final thing uh, will be letterboxing. And I'll boot up Hearthstone to show you what letterboxing looks like on this phone. So here I am in Hearthstone. And as you can tell, the game is not running in full screen. The game itself is in a 60 by 9 aspect ratio. And then there's this unusable space at the top and the bottom. And that's what letterboxing looks like. And unfortunately, when the game developer doesn't support this aspect ratio, you lose a little bit of what makes this phone great for gamers, which is that huge screen. And you'll essentially force to play the way you would play it on a smaller phone, which is not a huge deal. You can still play the game. But as I said before, when a developer properly supports the title in this aspect ratio, it's a, it's a much better experience for the gamer overall. And I'll boot up a different game just to show you what that looks like. So this is Legends of Runeterra. And just look at how much better the game looks like when you're actually utilizing the full screen as compared to the leatherboxed version when you're playing Hearthstone. In this case, it actually feels like you're playing on a proper tablet and there's just so much room for everything here that you see on screen. Uh, it's just an amazing experience when you get to play games that are properly supported in this aspect ratio. Finally, I want to take a look at the front screen as well, which has an aspect ratio of 24.5 by 9, which once again is a weird aspect ratio and not all developers properly support it. So if you look at Command & Conquer Rivals in this case, it also has letterboxing, but it's now on the left and the right side, while we previously saw that Hearthstone had letterboxing at the top and the bottom. So we kind of have to deal with that letterboxing issue again, because this screen is a little bit narrower compared to what you would consider a normal phone these days with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And again, it's not a huge deal. For the most part, you're going to play games on the inner screen, because that's the whole point of buying the fold. But in a pinch, you can actually boot up a game here. Some games are better supported than others and might not deal with the letterboxing issue you see here. But I just wanted to mention this just so you have an idea. And I should mention one more thing. If you're running a game on the inner screen or the outer screen, it doesn't really matter, and you want to go in the other direction. So if I were to just open it up now, see how now the whole thing is letterboxed? Um, that's because that's how the game is supported when you boot it up on one screen and then you open the other. In some cases, you will actually get a warning, like in this case over here, you can see a message. I don't know if you can read it, but basically 
it's telling you that you need to restart the app so that you take advantage of the new uh, screen or the new aspect ratio sort of so when you're switching between the inner screen and the outer screen going back and forth it's a good idea to just kill the app or the game and just reboot it in the other screen so that it works properly as i said in the beginning of this video i'm not going to talk about the specs of this phone but suffice it to say that it's one of the fastest phones on the market right now so it will play pretty much anything you throw at it it doesn't have an external sd card but the internal memory of 512 gigabytes is plenty for anything you want to install and play on there overall i absolutely love this phone i think for a gamer having what's essentially a tablet available in your pocket at all times is absolutely amazing and it's going to be very difficult if not impossible for me to go back to a non-folding phone afterwards let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below and consider subscribing if this is the type of content you want to see. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.